Hello, my name is Dr. Gary Bettiger and welcome to a set of videos on which I'll be talking about ER entity relation diagrams along with enhanced entity relation diagrams. So let's get right into it. First of all, ER diagrams are used in the database for doing conceptual database design. Very graphical in nature and they show uh, what a system will look like. We take the ER diagrams and eventually map them to database tables. So let's begin a little example here. And we're going to use these rectangular boxes to represent the entities, which are like the nouns or the objects within the system. And let's say, for example, we have a faculty box over here. And over here we're going to place a student object. And let's say we need to specify, we specified the objects, or in this case the entities, faculty, and student with these rectangular boxes. Typically they map to database tables in the system. The next thing we want to do is specify the relationship. And in this case, we use a diamond to specify the relationship, and we will put the word teaches. So the idea is that faculty teach student, or in this case, we draw a line to connect them, and we say faculty teaches student. So this is called the relationship. Now, when we have a relationship between two entities, and we could actually have a relationship between three entities, we <coughs> need to describe that relationship, and we use the word cardinality. Now, from a previous video you might have seen in the series, cardinality referred to the number of rows in the table. In this case, cardinality refers to the number of instances that participate in the relationship. So, in this case, one faculty member might teach many students, so we put the letter N here, whereas a student might be taught by many faculty members, and we put the letter M, so we have an MN relationship. The relationships can sometimes be one to one, one to many, many to one, and in this case, many to many. So we have entity, relation, entity. The next thing we want to do is to specify the attributes for a particular entity. So let's say, coming over here, we have faculty, and the way we specify attributes is with an oval shape, and let's say we have social security number for faculty, and we might also have uh, Put another one, department for faculty. Now we'll have more, but we'll start with those two for now. And one of the things we talked in a previous video about keys, the way we would specify a key for an entity is by underlining it. So in this case, we'll underline social security number, and we would say social security number is the key for the faculty entity. Sometimes, oh, let's go to overdue student here. For student, instead of social security number, we might have the student ID, and we'll underline that. And let's just add one more attribute. For now, we'll say the student's major. Okay, so now we'll, we'll put more on here in, example, in this example in a bit, but that'll be enough to get us started. Now to illustrate some of the other ideas that we have, one of the things that we can do is, let's say a faculty member has a salary, and if the salary, let's say a net salary, is based on the gross minus the taxes, then we would use a dash line, and we might put the word 
net salary in there. Sorry. And the net salary, what that means is that it's, it's a derived attribute. So anytime you see a dashed line, it's a derived attribute. Now to show you, to show you another feature of entity relation diagrams, suppose a student, very popular student, has quite a few phone numbers, a cell phone, home phone, uh, work phone, and so forth. Well, that's an example of what's called a multi-valued attribute. And to show a multi-valued attribute, we use a circle or a double line circle like this with the word phone in it. And in this particular case, what that means is the student has more than one phone number. Another way of doing this in terms of a design perspective, we could have had an attribute for cell phone, we could have had an attribute for home phone, attribute for work phone. So two slightly different designs that are possible in this particular case. Well, another feature that we have in ER diagrams is what's called a composite attribute. And a composite attribute, com composite attribute means that it's made of more than one attribute. An example of that would be a student's address. So in this case, we might have address. Looks like any other attribute at this point. But what we do here, we put street, city, state, and zip. So a composite attribute means it's made of more than one attribute, in this case address, street, city, state, and zip. If we did name, we might have name, last name, first name as another example of a composite attribute. My goal is just to show a lot of the different features available in ER diagrams, not to make a complete diagram at this particular point. Now let's say a faculty member, maybe a faculty member has a dependent, okay, or several dependents. So a faculty member might have a spouse and several children. And uh, in that case, the dependents are not part of the system, and they're dependent meaning that if the faculty member goes away, in terms of quit, goes to another university, then the dependents assume we go with them. And to do that, we would show uh, a line like this. And this is just one way to do it. And we put a double line around the relation. Faculty has and I'm going to abbreviate it, faculty has dependents. And so this, is rep this represents what's called a weak entity. If it's a single line, it's a strong entity. And we draw a line here. And the idea is one faculty member could have many dependents. So we call that a one-to-n relationship. Notice I did a double line there. In this case, that means it's total participation. And by total participation, that means whoever is in this entity, or an instance in this entity, will be dependent on at least one faculty member. And it doesn't, it, it's not total the other way because a faculty member might not have a spouse or any children, so they would be not part of that uh, relation at that point. Now what we're going to do Unfortunately, YouTube has a limit time limit on how long a video can be. I'll stop here and continue in a moment. Thank you.